How's it going? Uh, good. I don't, that was, I've never had that just kick, kick me out. Yeah, just like kicked you out right as you came in, but that's totally it's like, fine. here's Val, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not exactly the way to go. I'm sure there will be a handful of other small technical issues as we go. We just mm -hmm. run with it here, nothing too fancy. We just want to keep it action packed for everybody. So I'm going to let you take it away, Val. This is Val Geisler from fixmychurn.com. She's going to discuss everything about how to uh, prevent customers from churning and how to get them back. And I'm really looking forward to this presentation. Val, I'll let you take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Derek. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Looks good. Okay, cool. So we're going to talk about the most valuable customer that everyone forgets. Um, I want to give you a heads up that a lot of my work has uh, focused uh, heavily in SaaS. Um, there's a lot that e-commerce can learn from SaaS and vice versa, quite honestly. And over the last year or so, I've been working more and more in e-commerce and it's been really fun uh, to see the carryovers between SaaS and e-commerce, um, especially if you run a monthly recurring revenue business. Uh, this is uh, really for you um, because you know, ultimately SaaS operates like monthly recurring revenue. And uh, if you do as a subscription based e-commerce and hopefully that you do if you're here, um, then, you know, you have very similar principles to apply to. So we're going to uh, move through this. Uh, you are in the right place if you signed up for this. Uh, summit. Um, but if you want to uncover hidden gaps in customer acquisition, I think that that is a big problem everyone's trying to solve. I know Derek said we're not focusing on COVID, but uh, that is definitely a problem we're trying to solve right now. If you feel really overwhelmed by the idea of building high top of funnel marketing plans, um, that's a, it's a big problem to, to solve, again, like customer acquisition, that top of funnel. Um, and we can really solve a lot of those problems further down the funnel. And if you've been tasked with growing MRR, but you don't know how. And lastly, if you know there's an easier way out there, customer acquisition can be really hard, uh, especially right now, and uh, there is an easier way. I'm gonna teach it to you. So if we haven't met before, hi, I'm Val. Uh, I am an email marketing conversion copywriter and strategist. I worked in-house as the number one, the first marketing hire, the number one marketing hire at an ESP, an email service provider. Um, that's where I learned everything I know about email inside and out. Um, I live and breathe onboarding and uh, welcome sequences and customer retention. Um, it's something I think about all the time. And I'm obsessed with churn reduction. So from that monthly recurring revenue standpoint, I think churn reduction is one of the most important things we can do because by changing your churn by 1%, you can impact your MRR in massive ways and it compounds over time. That's what's super fun about it. So here's what you're gonna learn by hanging out here today is how to grow your MRR without looking for new customers, a game plan for winning back your canceled customers, and three underutilized retention strategies that you can use today. So after all this is done, you can go and put these things into place. One thing I know for sure, and I, I always think this should maybe be my only slide that I ever use, uh, is um, there is no one right answer for sales and marketing, especially email. What works for one business might not work for yours, and testing is absolutely everything. You have to test and see what works for you. You have to try something out um, and, and see what it works and how it performs. And also know that email especially is a bit of a long game, so you have to give it some time before you know if it's working or not. So according to research from TARP Worldwide, it's five times cheaper to keep a customer than to go get a new one. That goes for canceled customers too. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the three kinds of customers to consider winning back in the first place and the scary ones to steer clear of. Let a customer service team get talking for a little while and you'll hear stories about customers who sent in dozens of tickets, who made daily requests, um, who cost the company hours, if not dozens of hundreds of hours in support time, and they eventually disappear. Uh, these customers are vampires. They suck the life out of your team and then they're gone. Um, Jason Zook is the, co is the founder of a education platform called Teachery and he has dealt with his fair share of vampire customers. He says not all real customers are ideal customers. There is a lot to running and he's, he's running a software company but really any company and doing customer support. 
and while also running a sustainable business. You have to understand that your business is just as important. Um, it's not always the customer is always right. Uh, vampires are customers that you can take a hard pass on, that you can walk away from. Unless they change their habits and come crawling back to you, there's no need to go chasing after them. So we'll leave them on the side. Which brings us to the next type of customer, which is uh, our ghosts. So ghosts are, are interesting customers. Um, when your ghost customers are originally in, involved with your brand, they're very excited. So let's say you sign up for a new product. Um, maybe you go and uh, put something in your cart or um, sign up for an email list. They're, they're very excited customers. But then something happens, either their doorbell rings or their kids crying or they get distracted and go check their email or they pick up their phone. Any number of things can happen to interrupt that buying cycle. So you've done, you've already done the really hard work of converting them from casual browser to interested sign up. But they, just because they didn't convert yet doesn't mean that they're not going to. The internet is a very busy place and it's easy to get distracted. Hi, honey. I need you to go, okay? Can I come? No, not right now. Can you have paper? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hello. <laughs> I think we all, uh, a lot of us have kids at home. Go ahead and take it and go. Cute. I, yeah, I actually had my parents watch my son just for today. So I yeah, know. Yeah, I know. Completely. Oh, man. I need you to go, honey. Oh, she's going to get some paper out of the printer. Uh, so, uh, take it and go. Thanks. So the, and just like that, right? Like this is as quickly as we can get distracted. Um, but it doesn't mean that your ghosts aren't interested in customers. So these customers are kind of stuck in limbo. They could be ghosts that haunt us all the time, or um, they might be customers who might've been, but um, they aren't necessarily if you do your job right. So they're technically a segment on their own, but your ghost customers can be a super valuable resource in the fight against customer churn. They won't impact your true churn numbers. So especially if, um, if you have a single purchase and then convert to subscription, if you don't sell a subscription up front, um, but they will impact your win back rate. So the other customer is your zombies. So the walking dead, the undead, the living dead, uh, and zombies, they go by many names, but they rarely say hello. Zombie customers are lurking just around the corner. They're the customers who did convert, who had a subscription, who bought with you once, um, they made a purchase, they signed up for a subscription. They Maybe they were around for three months or 12 months or two years. Um, they loved your product at one time, but they left. They're still out there. They're the living dead, right? <laughs> they are using another product or they're still searching for the right fit for them. Why? That's what we need to find out. Zombies can be immune to traditional communication though. Email overload is an onslaught of endless communication and push notifications have made people nearly immune to all kinds of re-engagement efforts. So what are you supposed to do? Well, reviving an undead customer isn't an easy road, but it can be easier than creating a brand new customer. The first thing you need to know to start reactivating already churned customers is what churn is for your business. So the basic formula of churn is always the same. The churn rate equals number of customers lost in a period divided by the number of customers at the beginning of that time period. So how do you get on the offensive? How do you put some of your team on defense, your traditional retention strategies, and then flip the script for your offensive line? The same retention strategies you use to keep existing customers can be repurposed for those canceled customers you can still win back. So here are the slight shifts you can make with those traditional retention strategies to help them win over your otherwise lost customers. So we're gonna talk about support. So typically support looks like the customer writes in, they have a problem, they have a question, uh, and then the support team says, I've helped you, have a nice day, and they move on. It, I recommend an additional layer of follow-up. So the customer writes in, the support team says, I've helped you, have a nice day, and then come back a couple of weeks later hey, I, we helped you a couple weeks ago. How are things going? Um, you know, look at their purchases. Did they make a purchase since that conversation? Um, is there anything else that you can help with at that time? Following up with 
customers after the initial customer support inquiry is a game changer. Reaching out to customers who requested a certain item back in stock, if you don't have a uh, in stock notification, reach out to them directly and tell them that the item is back in stock when that happens. It opens the floodgates of quote, new customers, even though they never were a customer in the first place or they, they were and then went away. So your zombie customers are someone who wants to be catered to. So they're immune to traditional community traditional communication. You have to grab their attention and speak directly to them. So you have to go in with that very personalized message. You can do this at scale with personalization and, and some of the tools that Derek can help you um, figure out what is the best fit for you from a tech standpoint, but you can also do it um, very manually if you have a smaller customer number and, um, and you have the ability to reach out manually to customers who maybe have sent in a request in the past and you're able to fulfill that now. Um, then make them an offer that matters to them. So the customer success experts at Groove found that upselling is a true power move if you have the right offer and the right audience. So the probability of selling to a new prospect is somewhere between five and 20%. And the probability of so selling to an existing customer is 60 to 70%. If you have a subscription and you have customers who have only made one purchase, you need an upsell sequence that you send to them uh, you know, over a period of time after that initial purchase that pushes them into subscription or at least educates them around subscription. Speak directly to them, not to the masses, and they just might sit up and pay attention to your upsell. Now, people love to talk about themselves ask someone what they're working on or what inspires them or what they're most passionate about, and you'll have a friend for life, especially right now when we all are desperate for human communication. So caring about your customers seems obvious and everyone says to me, oh yeah, we talk to our customers every day. They send in support tickets or we're in our Facebook group or we're um, answering Instagram DMs. That's great, um, but you need to have one-to-one -one conversations, not just about the product, but about them. It might not be possible to have these with every type of customer, um, but your zombies are your most important customers to get on one-on-one -on -one conversations. The, your canceled customers are your, those are you know, the people who purchased once and have never purchased since then or canceled an existing subscription in the past. Those are the people who have the best possible information for you. So what do you do? How do you talk to them? You wanna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I do these all the time uh, for, for my clients. I do them on Zoom, and then I grab a transcript of the recording afterwards. I speak directly to them. It's one-to-one. -one. Uh, and I have a few questions to share with you about how to get that ball rolling. So about them, you wanna start by talking about them. Ask them how they would describe their, their work, what they do. Um, if your product is not related to work, then they, maybe they just can talk about a, you know, what they do on a typical, typical day. Um, what do they consider their role or their, their work in life? Uh, it's, it's an easy question to ask because it gets them talking. Everyone knows how to answer that question. Um, it gets them talking and it might give you some insight into who they are. Next, you want to ask them what they're, what they're working on right now or what they're passionate about, like what matters most to them right now. Um, especially if your company has a mission, like let's say you're a sustainable brand, um, if you talk to people and they mention a particular passion project, that's important information for you to know. It's a potential partnership rep, uh, stream. It's a potential um, advertising stream. There's a lot of information in that answer. And then you wanna to talk to them about the biggest problem they're facing that keeps them awake at night. Um, this, this might seem like it's a silly question to ask it if your product is like t-shirts, um, but it's really important because you can, it can determine future products. It can also determine future messaging. Um, and this question, when you do these kinds of interviews over time, it's gonna, their answer is gonna vary. Quite obviously, the biggest problem that's facing most people right now is our, you know, our current status in lockdown. So um, these, are, these are really important things um, to, to know on a rolling basis about your customers so you know how to talk to them. This informs your entire messaging strategy. You also wanna to talk to them about your product. So um, 
so, and these questions are worded for SaaS, but you can easily translate them to e-commerce. So what was happening in your world that led you to um, purchase, to sign up for our email list or to make a purchase? Or um, so these are your zombie customers. So they made a purchase at one time or they signed up for a subscription. Uh, so you want to ask them what was happening in that time. You want to ask them, so this is, again, for SaaS during your trial, or so this is, in this case, um, if they made one purchase but um, or signed up for a subscription and they continued on after one initial month. So if they made a purchase and then did subscription or had a subscription from the beginning and continued beyond that first month, what happened during that first month that convinced you the product, this, uh, our product was the right solution for your problem at that time? And then um, the third question is about any fears that they have. So were you skeptical or anxious when you made your purchase? Um, and then if they, these are people who have canceled, right? So we have to remember to ask them, is that what ultimately prevented you from using our product long-term? So you ask them some questions about them. You ask them about your product. Uh, these are uh, using a framework called Jobs to be Done. It's something I am very passionate about um, and would love to teach you more fully, uh, but I, I'd be here for the rest of the day. Um, so I uh, am happy to answer Jobs questions anytime. Um, we probably won't have time here, so you can hit me up on Twitter. Those are at the bottom of uh, every single slide. Uh, so. The reason we're doing all of this is because we want to help them build habits. So James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, which I believe is one of the best non-business business books that you could possibly read, especially when you run a subscription brand, understanding how habit forming works is really powerful. Uh, so, so James talks a lot about uh, the, the author of The Power of Habit uh, and the three-step process that all habits follow. So it's called The Habit Loop. And so there's a trigger, the event that starts the habit, the routine, the behavior that you perform, the actual habit itself, and then the reward, the benefit that's associated with the behavior. You want to understand what these are in order to know how people move through your product and what it is they're getting out of your subscription. If they, if there is no trigger, so in it, there is a trigger because they initially signed up, um, but what's the routine? And there's content in that. There's email content, there's blog content, um, videos, all of those things. And then what's the reward? Again, that's all content, that's all information for you around your marketing strategy. So you see this again and again. Um, the, the same cycle is observed in a common copywriting technique called problem agitation solution, um, problem agitation uh, solving sometimes is what it's called, uh, pass formula. So something happens, something else makes that thing feel really important or stand out, you get to a solution that rocks. So this is Ash Mayora's uh, Customer Forces Canvas. It's here, it's everywhere from Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey to nearly every single movie, sitcom, and fiction book ever produced. Once you start to see this habit loop, you'll, start, you'll see it everywhere. If Hollywood can profit off of it, so can you. Since humans are in the constant rat race of either chasing pleasure or avoiding pain, it's natural that we develop habits around those things we find pleasurable. So do you know what someone who is a customer before and is giving you a second chance will not find, find pleasurable? The same onboarding that they've already been through once. So creating customized onboarding for your newly won back customers, people who've been customers before and have come back. So that onboarding, that welcome sequence, um, you don't want them to drop back in as a, a brand new customer and go through that same process. Uh, create something really custom for them. And it's the beginning of a beautiful restarted relationship. Of course, testing your efforts is the only way to know what works and you should always be testing. Choose a segment of your canceled customers and try a few of the techniques that we've talked about today. Record the results and then pick another segment. Find out what's effective and go all in on that strategy. Again, what works for one business might not work for yours and vice versa. Since we started by talking about churn, let's wrap up with a new measure to check and that's your win back rate. Uh, so when you know your win back rate and you can bring that to your team meetings, talk about it in relationship to your churn rate and you'll see magic happening. Then you wanna make sure that those customers who came back stay customers for life. That's long-term retention that we're talking about. And uh, because really the last thing that the world needs is more zombies.
So marketing is all about testing, especially email marketing. I want to know what you're taking away from today for your own path. Uh, please come find me on Twitter. I'm at Love Val Geisler. Tell me what you learned from today's session, from uh, the sessions later today, from putting it into work in your own business. I would love for you to keep me updated on how it's working out for you. And I want you to remember this is not just theory. This is exactly what I do every single day with my clients. And they work on every single business with humans as their customers, which is every single business. So whatever helped you sign up for this particular session today, maybe you want to get better at your top of funnel marketing. Maybe you thought you'd pick up some new tricks. Or maybe you know the value of thinking outside of the traditional marketing box. You can grow your MRR without looking for new customers. Building connections with past customers is the fast track to growth. And I want to help see you through it. Einstein said that everything in life should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. And I think he was talking about email. So I want to give you a guide from your welcome sequence to long-term retention. And the initial piece is that welcome sequence. You can get a copy of what I call the dinner party strategy. Uh, we didn't have enough time today for me to get into this too deeply, but I do have a PDF version of uh, the dinner party strategy that I can share with you. And you can pick that up at fixmyturn.com slash TDPS. So you can go there, uh, download the dinner party strategy, put it into place in your business, and let me know what you're seeing. And that's it. I have some time for a few questions. Um, and thank you, Derek. Yeah, um, and I think Derek actually answered some of the questions in the chat. We yeah we had uh, we we had a little side discussion alongside just talking yeah. about attribution by channel, which I yeah, think good. is a fascinating topic. And so I threw out a couple of tools that help. I don't think there's any magical solution to it. Sometimes you just won't know where people came from. Uh, one of the tools I recommended is called Inquire Labs, which is one of, it's just a really simple survey that says, how'd you hear about us? But it comes in a few different flavors, um, like on site and, and in email and in a notification. And that really yeah. helps like drive the response rate, which ends up being important for statistical significance, as well as if you want to break down, you know, your, your retention by channel. I, I always find that kind of a really fascinating one um, because uh, I ran, you know, $300,000 a month in Facebook ads. And we wanted to know, uh, as you're ramping that up, you use your existing customer base and their retention rate as your baseline. And right. so the question is, is will Facebook ads perform from a retention standpoint, as well as, you know, word of mouth or influencer? And I'm sure you can predict what the answer usually is in that situation. It's no. Yeah, it's, it's like they, they don't hold as, as high um, a caliber interest in the product as they did from um, when they came in because their friend told them to. Exactly. Um, and I think that was kind of the, the questions around um, how to identify an organic customer versus maybe a paid ad mm -hmm. customer or another channel. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on, on attribution, especially as it pertains to retention? Yeah, I think it's important. Like it's, it's hard to go back and look at it when you don't have those things set up to begin with. Right. Um, but there's also um, something that a, a lot of brands shy away from because it leads to more inbound to manage. Um, but just asking people to reply to your emails, um, especially in that welcome, like what, after they've either signed up to your list or, um, or made their first purchase, and those are probably two different kinds of welcomes, um, but asking them to talk to you, it, you can ask them like, Hey, how'd you hear about us? And, um, like, tell me, tell me the story of getting to know who we are. Um, because they'll tell you that story, they'll hit reply, you'll engage a conversation with your customers. Um, again, it's like things that are really effective don't scale necessarily. Um, but they, they are incredibly effective. The other bonus from the email standpoint is that it helps your deliverability because by hitting reply, they're telling the inbox, this is an email I want. And so then they're going to con continue to get your emails um, over and over again. Yeah. Um, and their, their replying helps the other inboxes know that you're a safe emailer and all those things. So um, from a technical standpoint and from a human standpoint, it's a really nice thing to ask questions and engage conversations. There, you, you mentioned that, yeah, the human with a capital H. The, so I, I've seen, heard, um, and, and typically just found this to be true, but I, um, that 
the customers that you talk to on the phone from a non-customer service standpoint. So the ones that you like outreach to with a phone call, letting them know that you're happy and like maybe asking, well, how'd you hear about us? Yeah. are more likely to retain. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's, you're doing it for not just like to know the customer, possibly even do customer product development and feedback, um, but you can do it. It's actually a retention strategy. And so yeah. even though it doesn't feel like it scales because it costs a human time, uh, I feel like it can scale from a revenue standpoint if you can crack the code of um, basically implementing what I would call customer success instead of customer service. I think that there, this could be a new channel, a new um, strategy for businesses, especially those with proven like, you know, retention and lifetime value. Uh, like they're, they're like, we've got a 90% retention rate. We're so, you know, it's pretty good, you know, a first, for, for a product subscription. How do we get that extra 5%? How do we squeeze it? It's like, well, it's not going to be doing the same thing over and over. No. But maybe if you call... 20% of your customers on the phone, you'll find that those 20% retain better just from having an initial phone call with you. Yeah. So two uh, things come to mind. One is that the, on the SaaS, in the SaaS world, the very best product managers that I know, which if you own an e-commerce business, you're a product manager. Um, the very best product managers that managers I know call at least one customer every single day. Um, so they have a, a, a post-it note on their computer. Did you call, talk to a customer today? And so they call at least one customer every day. The other thing is uh, that the, the ability to, uh, to like look at that long-term retention and see, yeah, it doesn't necessarily scale to talk to people, but that split of success and support are, is really important. And if you, if you have a very small team, just think about everyone as customer success, stop calling it support, mm -hmm. um, because then you'll think more about long-term with your customers. It's just like a little mental switch. If you have a larger team, you can actually split it out into two teams where support can answer tickets and get things done. And that way, uh, success is focused on that welcome experience. The long-term retention is doing those customer interviews. Um, so it's a really interesting way to scale a, a support slash success team. And I think it is very powerful to just think about it as success and not support. Yeah. And we can even bring that all the way back to sales, which I believe Gorgeous will talk about in just a minute, mm -hmm. uh, because it, you can talk to them before they purchase, helping them overcome the, the barriers, the like no trust barriers and getting them to purchase. And I can pretty much bet that that will also help with retention on the back end. Once yes. you talk to them up front, they know that they have a support system to go to. So they have a little bit deeper trust than the customers that you know, just as my previous example, bought through Facebook ads and like kind of rushed through the funnel. Yes. Um, and yep. so, yeah, slowing down to speed up, I think is also kind of the philosophy here. It is. And just remember that there are actual people. They're not just credit cards. They're not customers. They are people and um, they deserve to be treated like that. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Val. And we got your, you. uh, your dinner party guide here. Is there any, for you personally, who would you like to talk to brand wise? Who's a, who's a good fit client or customer for you? Maybe we've got somebody in the audience. Let's give you a quick plug. Sure. Yeah. So uh, we work with brands that are focused on monthly recurring revenue. Um, we work with brands that from any size, as long as you have existing customers, if you're not, um, you know, kind of pre-revenue, um, but all the way up, we scale with you. So uh, there are opportunities at every level. And if you're focused on subscriptions and keeping customers coming back, month after month um, or quarter after quarter, uh, which is the case in a lot of uh, yeah, e-commerce, um, then we want to talk to you and we want to help you know those humans that are purchasing from you. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, and you can, should, I, should we give your personal or your work email? Or... Oh yeah. Uh, it's hello at fixmychurn.com. You can reach out to us there. Um, you can find me on Twitter at either, either Twitter account, though I'm more active at my Val Geisler. Um, and uh, there's a question about physical products. Um, these subscriptions with physical products, exactly the same. Um, yeah. So, and it, there are different methods for different demographics. Gen Z, you might do some of these things a little bit differently. Like you think might think more SMS than email. Um, but the, the strategies apply across the board. Yeah. And I agree completely. It's just, it's about changing the, the channel or the medium and maybe a little bit of the message, but the concepts on how humans have behaved for the last 10,000 years still hold true. Yeah. Uh, they're either seeking pleasure or running from pain. Uh, they I are, really yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Thanks cool. so much, Val. We're going to move into our next Bye, session. Bye, everybody.